after enduring multiple delays and a tense last-minute scrub, Starship Flight 8 finally roared to life, lifting off from Starbase, Texas. However, Flight 8, featuring the V-2 version of Starship revealed a number of critical issues. The SpaceX Starship V-2 is now over to as the upper stage vehicle yet again explodes in outer space and rains down as a fireworks display over the Bahamas. SpaceX tackled these challenges and pushed the vehicle closer to full reusability The highly anticipated test flight ended in disaster as the vehicle met a fiery fate, marking yet another dramatic setback in SpaceX's quest for deep space exploration. 8 Minutes That's how long it took for SpaceX's monumental achievement to transform into yet another explosive setback. The initial launch was nothing short of spectacular. The world's largest rocket standing at a towering 400 feet thundered skyward with a raw power of 33 Raptor engines generating nearly 17 million pounds of thrust. This was largely attributed to pressure issues in the ground system. There are mechanical systems in the launch mount that use pressurized gas to spin up. The Raptor engine turbo pumps in the super-heavy booster prior to engine ignition. As it climbed through the atmosphere, Starship conquered Max-Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, without even flinching. Then came a milestone moment. The Super Heavy booster separated flawlessly before executing what many thought impossible. It returned to Earth and was caught by the mechanical arms of Mechazilla, marking SpaceX's first successful booster catch. But just when victory seemed certain, disaster struck. At approximately eight minutes into the flight, the upper stage began tumbling uncontrollably. On this attempt, issues still arose, problems with the ship, similar to Flight 7, but even more severe, and newly revealed damage at the launch site. This wasn't a random failure. And now we have crucial information about what went wrong and how SpaceX plans to address these recurring issues. The moment those 33 Raptor engines ignited, Starship Flight 8 was already rewriting the rulebook of space exploration. The countdown proceeded with surgical precision, despite earlier delays that had kept SpaceX engineers working around the clock. As the massive rocket cleared the launch tower, the ground literally trembled beneath the feet of onlookers. This is where aerodynamic forces reach their peak intensity, and it's the point where many rockets have historically failed. But Starship pushed through without even a shudder, a testament to SpaceX's meticulous engineering and structural design. Space sets his innovative hot staging technique, where the upper stage fires its engines before fully separating from the booster, worked flawlessly. This isn't just showing off. It's about maximizing efficiency and payload capacity by ensuring continuous thrust during the critical stage separation process. The massive mechanical arms of Mechazilla extended, ready to catch this falling titan. The mechanical arms successfully grabbed the descending booster. A feat SpaceX had been working toward for years. This wasn't just a technical achievement. It represented the holy grail of rocket reusability. No more ocean landings, no more recovery ships. Just catch and reuse, potentially slashing launch costs even further. The vehicle had reached an altitude that would have made it nearly impossible to spot with the naked eye from Earth. Telemetry data began showing unexpected readings from the upper stage's engines. One by one sensors indicated pressure fluctuations and thermal anomalies in the engine bay. The flight controller's expressions shifted from triumph to concern in an instant. Starship began to wobble slightly at first, then more violently as its control systems fought a losing battle against whatever was causing the instability. Finally, as the spacecraft tumbled out of control, communication was lost. The most troubling aspect. Just two months earlier, in January 2025, Starship Flight 7 met an eerily similar fate. That mission also saw engine problems at approximately the same flight time. Now with two consecutive upper stage failures occurring in almost identical circumstances, SpaceX engineers are facing some hard truths about the complexity of their spacecraft. The upper stage of Starship isn't just a simplified version of the booster. It's an entirely different beast with unique challenges. While the Super Heavy booster operates primarily in Earth's atmosphere, following relatively predictable physics, the upper stage must function in the vacuum of space under radically different conditions. One of the most significant hurdles is propellant management and microgravity. Without Earth's gravity pulling liquids down, ensuring consistent fuel flow to the engines becomes exponentially more difficult. 
even minor inconsistencies in this flow can trigger engine shutdowns or worse. Another critical challenge is the need for multiple engine reignitions. Unlike the booster, which only needs to fire once during ascent before returning, Starship's upper stage must restart its engines multiple times during a mission to perform orbital maneuvers. Each restart represents another potential point of failure, especially with the complex Raptor engines that operate at the very edge of material science and engineering capabilities. The Raptor engines themselves push the boundaries of what's possible, operating on a full-flow stage combustion cycle, a design so complex that no country had successfully deployed it operationally until SpaceX. These engines achieve incredible efficiency, but at the cost of increased complexity. When everything works, they're revolutionary. When something goes wrong, the consequences can be catastrophic. Based on the telemetry data and visual observations, experts believe Flight 8's failure stem from issues remarkably similar to Flight 7. All signs point to a propellant leak in the engine section, likely either liquid oxygen or methane that created a runaway reaction. Once a leak begins in the cramped engine bay, it creates a dangerous environment. The leak could have frozen critical components, damaged sensors, or created hotspots that trigger automatic shutdowns and some engines. With some engines offline and others still firing, the spacecraft would lose balance and begin tumbling. What's particularly concerning for SpaceX is that this represents a potential design flaw rather than a one-off manufacturing defect. Two nearly identical failures suggest a fundamental issue that needs addressing, possibly in the plumbing systems that feed propellant to the engines or in the thermal management systems designed to keep components at optimal temperatures. While SpaceX engineers are focused on the technical challenges, there's another force that could prove even more challenging. Despite these setbacks, SpaceX isn't likely to slow down for long. Their engineering team is already analyzing the failure data around the clock, developing solutions to address the propellant management issues that plague both Flight 7 and Flight 8. Even with these explosions, SpaceX has made remarkable progress. The successful booster catch alone represents a revolutionary advancement in rocket reusability, one that could eventually transform access to space for generations to come. History shows us that every revolutionary spacecraft faces failures on its path to success. They do mention that none of these measures are intended to be a permanent fix, this is all a stopgap measure until we get to Raptor 3, but we're not there yet. SpaceX said that they fixed it. So far the response from SpaceX has been pretty generic. They made a post on X that essentially just pointed out the obvious. During Starship's ascent burn, the vehicle experienced a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. And contact was lost. Elon Musk wrote in a reply on X that was unusually somber, quote, It was an upper stage ship failure to be honest, but we learned a good amount in building. The new ship design and the flight. Elon followed that up with, Today was a minor setback progress as measured by time, the next ship will be ready in four to six weeks. So at this point it's not clear what SpaceX could change to prevent that same thing from happening a third time. They seem to be pretty confident about solving the issue prior to Thursday, but clearly they did not. So it's looking more and more like the real fix for the problem is Raptor 3. SpaceX kind of gave this away during the pre-flight show. Chris from Hawthorne, California came on the show to talk specifically about the Raptor engine. He talks about how SpaceX is constantly improving their engine designs using something they call the algorithm. He says that this algorithm helps engineers to question the requirements of the engine, find the parts that they don't need, and then optimize the design. You can see this at work with the progression from Raptor 1, which never actually flew, to space, then Raptor 2, which is currently used on Starship and the booster, and Raptor 3. This new design eliminates the unnecessary components and moves as many of the parts as possible from the outside of the engine to the inside. Chris says that potentially the biggest advantage of Raptor 3 is that it will allow SpaceX to remove the engine heat shields from the thrust section. That adds up to removing around 1 metric ton of mass per engine. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time